Hello. Uh, today I'll talk about uh, RabbitMQ message broker uh, in relation to microservices. So when you implement microservice architecture, you have um, different uh, containers or blocks of code, uh, each doing its own function. Uh, but obviously you need to do interaction. Uh, block or container on its own is not useful. So you need to call it from outside or from that container, you need to call something else and so on. There are multiple ways how to implement communication. Uh, you can do direct calls, uh, but then uh, your microservice architecture becomes less flexible and at the end it becomes some sort of uh, monolith, just uh, uh, split into different containers, but still uh, all of them would uh, talk to each other uh, with the dependency. So to avoid this uh, situation, uh, uh, I prefer to use uh, RabbitMQ message broker. And with this uh, message broker, uh, the idea is that you don't uh, implement direct calls between uh, microservices. Instead, you rely on uh, Postman, uh, on RabbitMQ, where you send uh, the message and uh, RabbitMQ is responsible to uh, deliver it to, to the receiver. And this allows uh, in the future when you want to replace containers, uh, when you want to replace functionality or add an additional functionality, you could just subscribe to the same message get it and process the message. Okay, uh, this is the website for RabbitMQ. They have great um, uh, guides uh, how to install and how to do basic functionality for the tutorials. But when I was um, trying to uh, set up architecture with RabbitMQ, I struggled a bit. Uh, it was not obvious how to set up uh, and run it in a simple way through, uh, through Docker, for example, with containers, how to set up it as a service and how to connect to it and so on. So that's why when I figure out uh, the answers, I decided to make this quick video uh, so that in the future, it will be good reference for myself and uh, hopefully for you, if you're looking uh, to set up a microservice, a microservice architecture with RabbitMQ broker, hopefully it will be useful too. So. The steps are simple. Uh, I'll have this application with um, configuration files and with simple send and receive uh, scripts. I'll upload it to GitHub and you'll find URL to the source code uh, below the video. So first of all, we need to set up uh, RabbitMQ uh, message broker itself. And the idea is that it will be, it will run as a standalone container and uh, our microservice uh, elements would communicate through, uh, through that um, environment, through, through uh, message broker, which runs as a standalone container. And you could have your microservice implementation uh, either also wrapped into Docker container or like in this simple case, uh, it will be just uh, basic Python scripts. Okay, I'm uh, using Docker and I'll set up um, uh, RabbitMQ message worker on Docker. So first of all, I have Docker file available. And here in the first line, I'm saying that I'll uh, use um, RabbitMQ Docker image uh, 3.8, the latest one. And then in once image will be initiated, then I'll uh, navigate to bin directory and will copy init script, uh, assign permissions and run the script. So, and this is the script which will be copied into the image. Uh, into the container, sorry, and um, uh, what the script does, uh, it sets up um, plugins for RabbitMQ, like uh, management plugin, and then it uh, creates a couple of default users uh, with um, default passwords. Obviously, in your case, you could uh, set uh, stronger passwords as, as you would uh, uh, as you would like to. Okay, and at the end, uh, have Docker compose uh, uh, YML script. Uh, which wraps um, uh, all the Docker configuration. And uh, uh, for example, here we provide uh, uh, users that will be created and we define volumes for the Docker container where um, configuration files, temporary files will be stored from, uh, from the message broker. And typically uh, this is oversimplified example because uh, Python uh, scripts uh, receive and send are not wrapped with the containers, they just uh, Scripts on its own, but in real life, you would have uh, for the microservice architecture for each service type, you would have separate container. 
and then you don't want to uh, play uh, separately with each container and deploy it and uh, and initiate and so on. So typically you would use single uh, like YML uh, the configuration file Docker Compose with um, all the configuration for message broker for all your microservices and you would run command once uh, and uh, it will stop all the inf infrastructure for you or you could uh, drop infrastructure as well for, for the same uh, interface instead of playing with all the services separately. Okay, uh, so we have uh, uh, that's all uh, what relates to the Docker and now we can uh, try and uh, run it up. So I would navigate to, to, to the folder where uh, Docker uh, configuration files are stored and first I would uh, run Docker uh, compose up and this will um, this Docker compose utility would uh, obviously uh, load uh, configuration from Docker compose YML and execute all the steps as, as described uh, in, in, in this configuration file. And yeah, for example, it looks up for a service uh, RabbitMQ and it looks up for this Docker file and uh, based on the content from the Docker file, it will do all the initialization. Okay, and I run it and it should uh, run quite quick and let's, uh, I, I like to watch how all the initialization is being executed. So yeah, first of all, it uh, loads um, RabbitMQ uh, image. Uh, it's, it's not large, so the load is quite quick. Image is loaded, then it's uh, copying the init script, uh, assigning permissions and uh, running the script. Doing configuration and at the end it should uh, create a user, uh, print out the message that user is created and this is when uh, configuration is done. Okay, it runs uh, plugin management. And by the way, RabbitMQ also comes with default UI where you could log in and, and see information about the queues and uh, messages that were sent through the system. Okay, uh, we see that default user was created. This means its initialization is done. And um, yeah, if I would open another terminal, I uh, could uh, check uh, containers. So I see that the RabbitMQ container is up and running. And if I check images, then I see uh, that there was uh, latest image three point eight was fetched, and then the, uh, another image was created, so probably to create a container. Okay, so now we can navigate to RabbitMQ console. And I'll, the user here, I could specify the one that I uh, set in Docker configuration files. So that would be uh, rabbit and username, rabbit passwords. I log in, and now obviously there is no information over here because nothing happened yet, no messages were sent. And now let's do a quick uh, test. So we have uh, sent and receive. Python scripts in receive, we are listening for the message. So this will be our microservice subscriber. And when the message arrives, we just print it out. So here we just um, open connection to the uh, Arabic MQ message broker, uh, declare Q hello. And this callback is being defined when a message arrives, then this callback is invoked and we just print it out the message which we received. And then we just uh, waiting uh, in the receiver. We keep waiting uh, in this blocking connection when when we get the message and just uh, process it, uh, process it, and print it out. This is the receiver and send. Uh, it uh, actually also opens blocking blocking connection and uh, it con attaching to uh, it's. Uh, connecting to the same queue, hello, and uh, it's doing basic publish here. It just um, sends a hello world message uh, to the receiver. So the qu very quick test to make sure that our uh, RabbitMQ Docker container runs. 
So let's navigate to uh, app folder. Okay, this is over here. And let's run Python receive. So we'll initialize our receiver. It says waiting for connections. Fine. And then we can send our test message. So we run uh, send. And we say, uh, the message prints here that hello world was sent. And if we navigate back to the receiver, we see that um, it prints out uh, message hello world was received. If we navigate back to um, uh, web console, we see that there was one uh, event, message was sent. And if we go to queues, we see that hello queue was created and uh, there are some statistical information over here as well. And when uh, this image, sorry, the container was created. We uh, defined uh, local volumes. So once container is up, uh, then in the same directory from where where we have our Docker configuration scripts, we we get data, etc, and logs. Um, those files are stored over here from the container. So the files are stored locally on your environment and. This makes it easy. Uh, you don't need to go to a container if you want to check like logs, for example. You just uh, check it on your operating system and without opening the container. Yeah, so that's the idea. And thanks for watching. Hopefully this uh, quick and simple uh, explanation uh, gives you a clear idea how to run um, RabbitMQ container and how to send and receive messages using that container. And you uh, are encouraged to try something more complex and experiment and, uh, and yeah, implement logic. So thanks and uh, see you next time. Bye.